Welcome back to our Open World Coast Tycoon 2 adventures. Today, we have a park that has been in the works for more than a calendar year. No, I did not work on it continuously for a year. Most of the middle was just not going back to it at all. But this is based on a park that I showed you a long, long time ago called Triple J's King's Domination which is the GP Amusement Park. If you don't know what the GP is, it's basically anyone who's not a coaster enthusiast. They go to amusement parks, but don't have an extended passion for the study of roller coasters. But it's not them that I'm trying to make fun of. In fact, they are completely necessary for the survival of amusement parks. And it's really them that decides the success of a new roller coaster that a park builds. Really, what we're making fun of is something called GP videos, which are these videos that uh, do not make any sense and are supposed to rank coasters or try to say that they're so dangerous and they, they're they deadly. And so basically, that's what this park is making fun of. So, let's begin. I made a new folder here with my .park files, which is a brand new save format for OpenRCT2. Which is fantastic! It, uh, I already thought this game was a lot of fun, but it's even better now with the dot .park format. If you want it to be explained, you could go to Marcel Valls' video on it, but I'm in the process of redoing a couple of parks, but for now, let's go in. We're here! So, as you can see here, I made the entrance sort of like King's Dominion's entrance in Virginia, because, you know, it's King's, and with the sign here, and right here, these checkerboard things are going to be buildings. Uh, I just was too lazy to put them in now, but don't worry, I'll add them in soon. And that's where they're going to be. And of course, Eiffel Tower. We'll start by going left. The first coaster you'll see is the Wick Twister Dangling Coaster. It's a dangling coaster, which means that you're sitting in a chair with your legs dangling. Dangle. It's a dangling coaster. Dangle. It's a dangling coaster. Dangle. It's a dangling coaster. Dangle. It's a dangling coaster Dangle. with your legs dangling. It gathers some force before it goes up for the Twisted Roller Coaster movement to the top and slides back its way on the same path. Oh wait, it closed in 2021? Well, my life just sucks. Let me have a standard log flume here. As well as some rides here, and tall equals deadly, the Ferris wheel. This right here is a very classic ride from when the park first opened in the early 1900s. It used to be family owned, but then it was sold to Taft Broadcasting that became Paramount, so Paramount's King's Domination. And then it was the only Paramount park that was not auctioned off to Cedar Fair, but instead to the Triple J Parks Company. So that's the sort of mock backstory that I have for this park. And this is one of the oldest coasters still remaining. Oh my god, there's so many broken rides. Oh my god, it's they're so dangerous. This is called Old Equals Dangerous. One of my very first really good side friction coasters. Now we'll go to one of my favorite rides. This is an old-fashioned rickety coaster. And you go for an hour and 42 minutes on this mechanical bull. It was the first coaster to use a cable lift instead of a chain lift. Number six, El Toro. El Toro was the first roller coaster to use a cable lift instead of a chain lift. That's not actually true. Again, this is making fun of the videos I'm showing in post. As you can see, we have plenty of food and drink and bathrooms for you to enjoy. And eventually... I will make a sort of water park here, but for now, there are a couple of beach themed rides. This is small equals safe, because obviously the smaller kitty coasters are the safer ones, right? Come on! And over here, a wild mouse called Perilous Plunge. Number two, the Perilous Plunge. If you introduce enough water rides, this is not Perilous Plunge. This is Coast Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Seriously, how did you get a water ride and a wild mouse mixed up? Right, this is the exact case for the Perilous Plunge. This is not Perilous Plunge. This is Coast Rider. This ride had a 115 foot drop and in 2000... This is still not Perilous Plunge. This is still Coast Rider. ...restraints and fell 100 feet to her death below from this ride. Yes, you have finally learned. This is Perilous Plunge. Here's a standard drunken sailor ride. 
right next to it is based on one of my adventures at uh, the county fair one summer. We were stopped on top of a ride. Uh, not like this one, but another one. The GP would be like, oh my god, we stopped! It's unsafe! The GP went a ride when a ride stops like this. Oh my god, it's unsafe! It's broken! And here is a copy of Kinda Ka at Six Flags, New Jersey. Look at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is the tallest roller coaster in the world. It was designed to be one of the world's most dangerous roller coasters. King Dakka was designed to be one of the world's most dangerous roller coasters. King Dakka was purposely designed to be the most dangerous roller coaster in the world. Let's go over here now. In the exact same location as it was in RCT3 Park, this is circle-based ride. This circle-based ride that literally goes around in a circle. Circle-based ride that literally goes around in a circle. Circle-based ride that literally goes around in a circle. Circle-based ride that literally goes around in a circle. And, oh look, that's a cranium shaker from Whippy Kid Dog Days. And next to it, we have one of the better B&M floorless coasters. This is definitely based on the RCT3 one, although the helixes are new. Um, and of course, if there's no floor on the roller coaster, it must be dangerous. Can you imagine riding a roller coaster that doesn't have a floor? Oh my god, no floor, oh my god! Because how can a coaster be safe if there's no floor for you to put your feet on? <gasps> and if the music sounds a little bit different from the RCT2 style, that's because with the new save format, you can have RCT3 music in RCT2. How about that? I must give a shout out to Reddit user u slash a can of beans for providing this music on the RCT subreddit. So thank you, Kano Beans. Right here is an upcharge attraction called World Scariest Roller Coaster. Oh, wait, are you kidding? Wait a second. What is number one? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is this really number one? Sleep. Oh my. Oh, all was going fine. One, slingshot, not a coaster. Two, King's Island? King's Island? Next to it, we have a mini top throw drag clone called Very Bad Dream. You can feel the fear of riders by looking at the picture. This roller coaster looks like Very Bad Dream. Because this roller coaster looks like Very Bad Dream. Here is a classic triple looping short scoff coaster, and it is clearly the world's largest roller coaster. <laughs> in West Edmonton Mall's Galaxyland is the world's largest. Don't worry about the wood coaster next to it that takes more acreage. This is definitely the world's largest roller coaster. Here is an intimate wing coaster called Only for the Bigger Kids. Sky Rush is so scary, it should only be ridden by the bigger kids. Resembles a roller coaster version of the mechanical bull. And next to it, there's an open RCT2 ride called uh, It's Broken, Therefore Unsafe, which is a continuation of Oh my god, we stopped, it's unsafe, just because I couldn't fit the whole bit of dialogue into one ride. I like the second game more, but one great thing about the third game, besides being able to ride rides, is the longer character limits on rides. Uh, the park with the best custom designed rides. Why, thank you! Next to it, we have two more rides. Here is a clone of the Superman Ride of Steel roller coaster. Actually, the video that inspired this was talking about Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England, but he showed the one at Darien Lake instead, which Superman Ride of Steel roller coaster at Six Flag America is a mirror image of. But that's the one that I'm used to, so I just went with Superman Ride of Steel. One thing about this coaster is that it uses a chain lift launch system. This mega coaster has a chain lift launch system. What is a chain lift <laughs> launch system? It's like Hulk, but he uses a chain lift. It's like the Incredible Hulk, but he uses a chain lift instead. I know that this coaster has it. The Superman Intamin Mega Coasters have a chain lift launch system. 
but where on it is it? And that's the only hint I have. What is a chain lift launch system? Well, I don't know. I've been looking for 40 years. Next to it, over this lake, we have a wonderful custom steel coaster called the fastest ride in this park. In this next clip, we have a very fast roller coaster in Japan. This one is probably the fastest one in this video. And actually, unironically, it's one of my favorites. Like, it really reminds me of when I only had Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and the biggest rides I made were steel coasters like this. It looks really cool over the water and all. Two loops. There was one video a long time ago where I called a Cobra Roll two loops. And originally, this only had an excitement ring of like 6.25 because it was too intense. There are two loops over here that I since removed. Man, enthusiasts can be so GP sometimes. Super duper looper at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Over here are also some thrilling rides. Here is an exact clone of the Fury 325. Number one, Fury 325, which is a nightmare for the rider. Fury 325 is 20 feet tall. It dethroned its predecessor Millennium Force when it first opened in 2005. You can find this thrill coaster in Carowinds, North California. Very big ride. I'll love to ride someday. Next to it is another hyper coaster. Oh, well, Fury V25 is a giga coaster. No, because this hyper coaster became the world's tallest giga coaster. This hyper coaster became the world's tallest giga coaster when it debuted. Just in case you didn't know. But this is a clone of Expedition G Force. And what's great, I wish it could actually operate. Let me see. What, what's happening? Oh no, the cable lift is stuck. That means it's unsafe. Hold on. Okay, uh, that's a glitch I've gotten twice in the past, but yeah. I also got these catwalks from OpenRCT2. And what's great about this ride is that uh, it has over seven minutes of zero gravity. In addition to this, the ride also offers seven minutes of her seven minutes of her seven minutes of her seven minutes of zero gravity, making riders feel as if they're flying. And next to its station, we have one of the most thrilling and fun coasters in the world. This is a fine coaster called the Superman Roller Coaster. So, the story behind this is, in 2019, Derek went to Wiener Prater in Austria. There is a coaster there called Volare, which is a Zamperla Volare, which is Italian for fly. Volare, not the Zamperla part, that's just the company that made it. And his brother saw it and said, oh my, look, that's a Superman roller coaster. <laughs> I remember the day Dirk told me about that I died of laughter. It was the same day when we did uh, the bullfighting Mad Lib. It was New Year's Eve. Very cool. I built some buildings here too. And it has some more RCT3 music. Uh, Gothic Moon Style. Okay, here is the park's dangling coaster. Well, one of the dangling coasters. The Batman ride. I tried making a Banshee clone and uh, called Top 15 Most Terrifying or something similar. As in the <gasps> Top 15 Most Terrifying Rides in the World. But for some reason, uh, when I place it, it doesn't work. Let me see. This is Banshee at King's. See, invert. Coaster 1 in the way. Well, what if I turn on clear, clear checks? Please tell me that was recording. That was amazing. Well, I guess at some point I have to make a Banshee roller coaster. It's in the same park as the Beast. You know, the Beast and Kings. The ride is also the third longest roller coaster in North America, following the Beast in Kings, 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 the Beast in Kings. Maybe I built it with clearance checks off, and so, um, oh, yeah, I, I can, I can see there why 
that would be a problem. Yeah. Alright, next to the Batman ride, we have a 100-year-old wooden coaster. It's all good though. Even a 100-year-old roller coaster. Even a 100-year-old roller coaster. Even a 100-year-old roller coaster. Pretty cool RMC though. Here's the uh, excitement rating right here, highest in the park. And a JoJo roll as soon as you leave the station. Ooh. Here's the kids section and look at all the detail here and all these paths are from the deluxe edition of the first game. This, when I was making this, that's when I realized like, wow, this is one of my prettiest parks. Like, seriously, it, it was really made as satire, but actually it's become really nice. I, I like it. There are a bunch of key rides here, but there are three roller coasters here. First is, remember, this is a former Paramount Park. Uh, this is a copy of the Woodstock Express wooden coasters that are actually really good. And it's to introduce kids to the fact that uh, if it's a wooden coaster, it's dangerous. Which I slightly disagree with because before I rode Dominator King's Dominion, uh, I, I mostly rode wooden coasters. Wooden coasters felt safer, but of course, if you're like the opposite, well, here you go. I like how it's in the wilderness and such. Next to it, we have one of those flying ace aerial chase slash kitty hawk rides, Junior Dangler. And here is the scary part of it. Here's the haunted house that killed some people in the 80s at Six Flags Adventure Park. Scared to death in the haunted castle. In 1984, eight visitors were literally scared to death in New Jersey's Six Flags Adventure Park. Which is why you should never go to amusement parks. And next to it is a coaster that sort of makes fun of myself more than anyone else. Uh, this is the world's most terrifying roller coaster. Basically, in 2012, uh, the last time I rode a coaster was in 2008, Ravine Fire 2. Uh, it was so scary that I didn't ride a roller coaster again. But in 2012, I was willing to try again. When I went to Waldemere that year, the Comet was closed. Uh, it was under repair or something. So at uh, Six Flags America, when we went the next month, uh, I really wanted to go on Great Chase. But uh, I was like 11 years old. But I was like legitimately terrified what going on. But I went into the cart, but it started to rain cats and dogs. And I was actually relieved that I didn't have to go anymore because it started raining really hard. And it is the first steel coaster that I got into, but since it didn't leave the station, uh, I considered that I didn't get the credit until I actually rode it in 2020. So yeah. The fact that uh, I was actually legitimately scared of a kitty coaster. Like, listen to that music. Oh, oh my god. There's Mr. Bones over there too. Uh, I gotta get out of here. Here's one of my biggest bucket list coasters. This is... Hey, what the hell? Number 14, the Ijanaika roller coaster. Literally translating to, hey, what the hell? Which is probably what you're gonna be screaming when riding this massive steel giant that towers at a staggering 250 feet, making it the seventh highest roller coaster in the world. Not true, actually. Here is a great view to look at our wooden coaster, which plays, well, my, probably my favorite song from the RCTT soundtrack, Rolls like spice, right? Yes. And while it doesn't have any loops because wooden coasters can't bend and maintain strength, this wooden coaster features a max height of 181 feet. And while it doesn't have any loops because wooden roller coasters can't bend and maintain strength, while it doesn't have any loops because wooden roller coasters can't bend and maintain strength, while it doesn't have any loops because wooden roller coasters can't bend and maintain strength, while it doesn't have any loops because wooden roller coasters can't bend and maintain strength. As you can see, I had a lot more room to experiment with it. This, at the time, this was the biggest park size I could make in the game. I'm not sure why I made it that big exactly, but yeah, that gave me a lot of room for expansion. And so it got to be more than just a drop, a hill, 
loop and then back to the station. This is our stand-up coaster. And while in RCT3 I made it a B&M stand-up to make it more like the coaster that's in the video that uh, this ride is making fun of, I made it a Togo. Yeah, it's not not a very good company and the guests appear to know it. It is called Fujin Raijin the second. Number five, Fujin Raijin the second. This attraction, in which passengers stood throughout the course of the ride, had a horrible accident in 2007 when the train derailed. Oh, I've won an award. The most beautiful park in the country. Look at that. It was supposed to make fun of the GP, but it's actually most beautiful. Next to Fujin Raijin the second, we have the boomerang roller coaster, Tower of Horror two. Four. Tower of Horror 2. Tower of Fear 2. Another nickname that our guests commonly give Tower of Horror 2 is Flies Off the Track because that's related to Coaster Studios' uh, coaster pair, the Vacoma Boomerang, where it looks like it's going to fly off the track. <gasps> this right here is a Vacoma Corkscrew, one of the older ones in the park, I believe. It was here during, even before the Taft broadcasting days. This ride it's not exactly uh, making fun of a GP video, but it's actually from Airtime Thrills. You, you know what it is? Superman Eggy. Number 12, Superman Eggy at La Ronde. This one makes no sense. This little Vacoma corkscrew from 1981 named Superman? Superman Eggy? This ride doesn't do the Superman name justice at all. It was also green, then orange. Not even the classic blue and red of Superman. No wonder this got the axe in 2019. It didn't look very good any- Wait, what? It's not Superman Eggy? It's Super Menagee? Okay, well, that makes sense. Wait, what does Menagee mean? Ride? This is called Super Ride? That might even be worse than Superman Eggy. I thought that was really funny, uh, so I made a ride out of his mispronunciation or uh, lack of knowledge of Super Menagee and made Superman Eggy. <laughs> And of course, I made it a lot nicer than the actual ride. Yeah. Here is a Amperla Pendulum ride called Oh My God! What? Oh My God! What? Yeah, these things hit people a lot. Huh, as you can see by the videos, this really shows the recklessness of some people and why you should never go to an amusement park. And here we have a standard Marigold 755. What did I name the puppet cars? <laughs> Trailblazer! <laughs> this is a, a joke for Derek when he thought what he was pointing to was Trailblazer Hershey Park, but it was actually the bumper cars. Speaking of Derek, there's one more area that I need to show you the space area. Get ready. This is the reason this park exists. At the end of the entrance plaza is the reason I made this park in the first place. Flight of Fear. And you might be wondering, wait, that's Storm Runner. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I never let them forget that since... Uh, don't worry, the next coaster makes fun of me too. RCT3 has an exact clone of Storm Runner. This, I just had to do the best I could. Uh, but of course, having the Intamin LSM launch coaster, not the hydraulic launch train though, but close enough. Look, Bureau of Paranormal Activity, Fight of Fear. Uh, I made it like the actual thing. Next to it, we have a coaster that makes fun of me, just like the most terrifying roller coaster. This is called Dota Dompa's Top Hat. Here's why I call it Dota Dompa's Top Hat. The first video uh, I saw that really turned me into enthusiast was Theme Park Crazy's video on removed coaster elements. And he was talking about how the top hat on Dododompa was removed for a vertical loop, but I thought that that was the name of the coaster. Being in Japan, you know, I, I thought they would uh, name things a little bit differently. So. I thought the coaster was called Dododompa's Top Hat, where Dododompa is like an authority-like figure. I, I sort of imagine like the fat controller, <laughs> and this is his big top hat. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I named the coaster Dumpus Top Hat in honor of that. And below it, you can't see the station, but if you go down here, there's so many messages. You know what? Fix all rides and disable all brake tests. Great, now they're perfectly safe. Right here, as you can see by the car going, it goes under the park and it goes up here. This is our steel shutter door coaster. Tower of Terror 2 is a steel shutter door coaster. Steel shutter door coaster? What the heck? What? Is, where are they getting these names from? The steel shutter door coaster. So that's a pretty good cool little space area over here. Not that big, but uh has three launch coasters that really pack a punch and this right here uh, i say this for last because this is probably my favorite ride in the park you may have heard uh in bainbridge township ohio there was a park called the giga lake amusement park it's actually giaga lake but whatever now you may have heard that it closed in 2007 this is true you may have heard that they removed their big dipper coaster in 2016 this is true but it wasn't demolished that's a common misconception it was actually carefully packed up and brought to king's domination in tallahassee florida and we rebuilt it over here like look at that a triple j park has a giangale coaster i am so honored so we brought it here we repaired some of the wood to that uh, sort of got damaged in transport because we really wanted to get this coaster here at all costs. And it's great to see when you're from the parking lot. A bunch of palm trees. Remember, this is Florida. Why decide to put in Florida? I'm not sure exactly. It just works. We call it the Georgia Lake Big Dipper. The Big Dipper, located in Bainbridge Township, Ohio. Okay, are, are we on to the Geauga Lake one? The Georgia Lake Amusement Park. Georgia Lake! Oh my god! I might even make this downloadable on RCD Go website because I am so freaking proud of building a one-to-one -one recreation of the Geauga Lake Big Dipper. So this has been King's Domination, the GP Amusement Park. Right on. Yes, right on. Because this entire park was a plan. It was a trap all along. That was the point I was trying to make all along. Last time I went to Visa Park, I died like five times. Will you be next? These coasters are so dangerous. No one is safe. It's complete anarchy. You're gonna fly off the track and you're designed to be dangerous. No one survives. These lawsuits can evaluate in death. Don't ever go to Six Flags again! <laughs> get there, get there, everyone! Don't. Please ignore everything that happened. What's that? Coasters fly off the track? People die? What are you talking about? It has never been proven in a court of law that the Triple J Parks Company has caused someone to die. So, so just ignore all that. Have some fun. Never been proven. Never been proven, you might think. So it could have happened, but I don't know about it. No, it has never happened. Until now. Everyone dies. Anarchy. No survivor. These ghosts are dangerous.